I've got the recipe for you. This dip is just amazing. It just melts in the mouth. Bon Appetit! Hey everybody, I'm Vera Stewart and welcome to The Very Vera Show. I'm sure you recognize my very special guest today, Virginia Willis. She's a James Beard award-winning chef and cookbook author. And y'all, she has been on The Very Vera Show. This is her fifth time. I love that. That makes You're me so happy. the most popular guest I have. I think it's because we have such a good time together. <laughs> well, we're going to be making some scrumptious recipes mm -hmm. today in celebration of Mother's Day. So tell us about it. We're going to start out with an asparagus and a Vidalia onion salad, which is delicious and awesome. We also are going to prepare a low country shrimp and grits. <sighs> Who doesn't like grits? No, uh, absolutely. All right, and then finish the meal with brown sugar shortcakes with strawberries. Oh, well, you've got that beautiful seasonal mm -hmm. asparagus mm -hmm. right there. Spring so why time. don't we get started with the salad? So I love this salad because people often think it's, um, you know, salad has to have greens. Well, we don't have to have greens. So here I have a pot of boiling water, right? And I'm gonna add just a little bit of salt. Okay. okay? And then I have the asparagus and we'll just tip the asparagus in. And this has been, the ends have been trimmed and it's been cut into pieces. This time of year it is just exactly it's wonderful. It for is asparagus. such a wonderful, it is, it is a spring vegetable, no doubt. So we're gonna let that cook for just a few minutes. And then these are, uh, these are um, Vidalia onions that I've thinly sliced. And you can use the bulb Vidalia onions, and if you are able to find the baby Vidalias yes. before they get big, you can use those too. I know, especially the Vidalia onion season, it's, we've had so much rain this year. It's kind of off it, a little it's bit. It's a little off a little bit. So if you still can't find them, just use the Vidalias because we know that these are nice and sweet. Having said that, even though that they're nice and sweet, we want to cook them just a little bit um, with the asparagus, and then we're going to put them in this ice bath to stop the cooking. Uh, and your knife skills, Virginia. <laughs> Honestly, well, that's one of my favorite things. We get so many comments about it. You're just, you're great with it. Well, you know, when I was in culinary school, I mean, I've been doing it a long time, and it was a long time, long time since culinary school. But when I was in culinary school, my, uh, my friend Penny and I, we would get, uh, you know, two 10-pound bags of carrots and practice. <laughs> so if you want knife skills like that, or you want knife skills like oh, that, it's just man. practice. That's all it is. Okay, right. should I get started yeah. on the vinaigrette? So this is a nice light vinaigrette. We've got a little bit of lemon juice. Okay. And then you're going to add, um, you can add olive oil, right? Right. And then I like the combination. We've also got some sherry, sherry vinegar. Mm, I love yeah. the way it smells yes. and it's just a little different. And if someone can't find sherry vinegar, they can use apple cider vinegar. Okay. That would be an easy, an easy substitute. Okay, so let me show you this. So our asparagus, it's bright green. Right, and so now that it's bright green, it's not quite done, I'm gonna go ahead and add um, the Vidalias. And we're just gonna add these mm. and let them cook for just a second or two. Got one, I'm, oh, uh, 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 I'm making a mess. It's, it's trying, to, <laughs> trying to escape here. Um, and then if you want to, what I'm doing, this is kind of fancy, but um, if you wanna season it, you can season the vinaigrette with a little bit of salt. Okay. And then I have um, white pepper. Right. Um, and that's just so it doesn't have, okay. um, it doesn't have like the black specks. All right, so these onions, I've cooked these, and then now what I'll do is I'm just going to transfer uh, all of this to my to colander. And this is kind of a trick about putting the colander in the ice water. I could just put the asparagus in that ice water, but then I have to go, yeah. then I have to go fishing. And you got smart. Yeah, then I got smart. So I put it in the colander. Well, and you know, the thing I remember this from, from actually home ec yep. classes at Georgia, that vibrant green mm -hmm. is just gonna pop now. Right. Because it's getting flashed right. with this ice water. Exactly, and it's stopping the cooking. And the great thing about this salad, okay, we've made the vinaigrette and we've got the asparagus and we've got that separately. So it will, it possibly can turn color, like it'll right. um, make the asparagus a little bit um, dark. So what you wanna do is if you, if you wanted to do it ahead, what you could do is um, not. Yeah, okay, I'll take this. You want to go, you yeah, grab that? Got that? All right, so now I have a plate. And I'll just tip this, tip that on there. Isn't that pretty? Yeah, you okay. All right, and then we'll pat that. And then you want to put the cucumbers okay. into that big bowl? Yeah, so tell us what you did to the cucumbers. So the cucumber, um, we sort of peeled an erasing stripe, it's seeded. 
and then chopped into small pieces. Mm -hmm. All right, so go. this, I've got cucumber and then the blanched oh, asparagus so and Vidalia onion. There we go. And then we're gonna pour this on and, there? Yeah, and what I like to do is just pour a little bit Toss it and see if it needs any more. Right. Go. All right. I'll, I'll, you, dry, you pour and I'll dry. There we go. Oh, I love and that. And then you've got we've got some beautiful herbs, and this is a combination of tarragon, parsley, chives, and mint. That looks nice. That looks good, right? Yes, ma'am. And then you want to grab the herbs too? Yes. All right. So we're gonna just toss this yep, up. That's it. And then we come back from the break. We're gonna get started on those grits. Yeah, right? that sounds good. Everybody loves grits. All right. Come back with us. everybody and if you're just joining me I'm with my friend Virginia Willis and we are making Mother's Day ideas for a special maybe meal for mom exactly for mama, for in your mama, case. For my mama. all right so tell me what's going on over it smells wonderful. doesn't it smell incredible so this is on um, onions that I have sauteed with a little bit of garlic so this is the okay. basis wonderful. for our sauce for the shrimp and the grits okay yay so um okay so this is just super simple what you want to do is you want to cook them till they're lightly golden and then they're there are a lot of different ways to, to make shrimp and grits, but what I have here is I have some tomato, and it's just uh, a tomato that's been chopped, and this is super, super simple. And we add the tomatoes and cook that a little bit, and then I have some fresh bay leaves. And you said I need to smell I, You that. need to smell that. It's just amazing. Hey, it's just, wouldn't you just love to go to the spa? I know. And just... Well, so it, my memory of this is in France, when I lived and worked in France, we had a bay tree, and everybody would always go to the same spot on the bay tree. So it winded up. But if you have an opportunity to buy fresh bay leaves, buy yes, fresh bay absolutely. leaves. absolutely. You have no idea how long they've been on the shelf. Now, another thing, though, that I like to add to the shrimp and grits is that um, my mama always used Tony Sachery's. And, and so it's the best. The Creole seasoning. And so we're just going to add a little bit and, you know, get our Creole can-do on. And can I unveil this? Yeah, look at those grits. Yeah, Aren't they grits. beautiful? So these are a Jimmy Red corn, which is an heirloom corn. <sighs> And I'm so excited to bring these to you. These are for some friends of mine. Y'all, she brought me a bag that's bigger than me. <laughs> I know, 25 pound bag of, um, it's Geechee Boy Mill out of South Carolina. Oh, and this is this incredible I mean, it's stone just, ground heirloom corn. And I love it. The, I know, I mean, it's gonna be, it's it's gonna be really beautiful. So the great thing about this is we've got our sauce, we've got our grits. I'm gonna ask you to add a little bit of butter and then we'll add a little bit of Parmesan at the end. And the great thing about this is that we're gonna add our shrimp, but you can get it to this point. Okay. Because you don't wanna overcook your shrimp, right? No. So you can get it to this point, and then when you're ready to finish it, you add your shrimp. And of course, I'm just using um, Georgia, wild Georgia shrimp. Yep. Of course, they're sustainable. And you know, you can get those at the fresh market. Yum. And we want to run them on sale sometimes. I know. You, I can't tell you how many people have told me that they've yes. got Georgia shrimp on sale on Tuesdays in Augusta, Georgia. Right. So we just want to cook these. They're a loose sea right now. We're just going to mm. cook them until they're nice and pink and they just sort of tighten up a little bit. And that is kind of it. And then just before, um, we'll, we'll add the the parsley, and that is it. So this is a super simple shrimp and grits. Well, and you know, when it's when it comes to Mother's Day, mm -hmm. we both have the recipes that our mom made yes, for us. Exactly. But doesn't your mom want to eat what you love yes. on Mother's Day? Yes, yes, yes. But Mama loves shrimp and grits. I love it probably because I grew up because I, I grew up eating it. And you know, my grandmother, who is also a huge part of my life and culinary life, um, she was originally from South Carolina. Uh. She was a shrimp and grits girl for sure. Okay, so in Vera's corner today, we're going to talk a little bit about homemade chicken stock and then when we come back we're going to do the shortcake. Yay, shortcake! Yay, all right. 
Vera's Corner is sponsored by Tax Slayer. It's your refund. Go get it. Chicken stock may seem like an intimidating ingredient, but it's actually very easy. Today I'm going to give you some tips on how to make your own, take your cooking to the next level. Start by holding on to food scraps that you can use. Anytime you chop an onion, carrots, or celery, hold on to the leftovers, peels, and end pieces that you might otherwise throw away. Of course you can't make chicken stock without chicken, so hold on to those bones or carcass when you cook chicken. Don't worry about saving the skin. Start a stock bag in your freezer where these scraps can go until you have enough to make a batch of stock. When you're ready, add your stock ingredients to a large stock pot or the biggest pot with the lid that you have. Cover the stock ingredients with water, leaving about two to three inches of room at the top of the pot. Add some whole peppercorns, a bay leaf, and kosher salt. Bring to a boil, then simmer and turn the heat to low. Simmer for three to six hours. Remove the large pieces in your stock with a slotted spoon, then ladle the liquid through a fine mesh sieve into your storage container. Your stock will keep for about four days in the refrigerator, or you can freeze it for up to six months. Once you've tried homemade stock, you'll never want to buy it again. Welcome back, everybody. And you know, I know you make homemade chicken stock. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And I love to just keep it in the refrigerator and in the freezer. So I hope you'll try those tips there. All right, so we saved the best for last. <laughs> All right, let's get started. All right, so this is our brown sugar shortcake, and I've already combined the flour, the baking powder, sugar, and salt. Okay. All right, and then now I'm going to add some cold butter that I've cut into little bits. And what's happening here, so there's, a, you know, you know this, I know, but the folks at home may not. There's a little bit of science that's about to happen. It's chemistry. It is, it is. So what's going to happen is that the, the butter is going to coat the flour and it's going to prevent the absorption of moisture and that's what helps make a tender biscuit. Got it. There we go. All right, so we're going to, I'm going to mix this just until it starts getting sandy. Yep, if you don't mind slicing those strawberries, that would be great. Oh, I love that. And they this. smell wonderful. Yes. They smell really good. And they, these are my knife skills, yeah. people. <laughs> That's old this school. This is old school. You, you get a little thing going on there, you know. I've old got a few school. scars. Exactly. All right, I'm going to add, um, this is milk. All right, and then I'm going to add a little bit of heavy cream. This of course. Is definitely a decadent shortcake. A cake. decadent shortcake. And I'm going to pour most of it in, but I'm going to leave just a tad because that's what we're going to brush the tops of the biscuits with. And now I don't uh, want to over mix it here. And okay. this is where this mixer is just there we go. Going well, crazy. yeah, but it's, it's it's okay. So I don't want to I don't want to over mix it. God, these strawberries are so pretty too. Yeah. And you know, just taking your paring knife and hulling out the top and getting mm -hmm. that stem, you know, if you go ahead and do that first, then you it, the cutting goes a lot faster. And I like it, um, you know, the thing is, is like we can add a little sugar, it depends on how sweet they are, you know, but a little bit, just let it kind of let them sit there for a well, while. Let me check that out. I think they're pretty sweet. They are, but I like sugar. Yeah, me too. Okay, so I'm gonna put a little bit of flour on my board, and then I'll take some of this dough out. Well, gosh, it makes quite a bit too. And yes. all of these recipes are gonna be on our website at verybeer.com. Yeah. All right, so see, it's kind of what I call the technical term is shaggy mass. Okay, so we got a little shaggy, shaggy, shaggy mass going on. Okay, but so no, no, not to worry if think, it's not all like, staying together. Oh my gosh, together. what has she done? But what we're gonna do is I have a little bit of extra flour and I'll flour my hands and then we'll sort of bring it together. Mm -hmm. And just even the heat of your hand is gonna help, you know, help oh. with it. And then I'll just sort of 
fold the dough on itself, and it's patty cake. It right? is patty cake. It's just cake. that simple. Just like my grandma, I used to play with my mom and my grandmother. And you can see oh, those the bits butter of butter, in it. right? So those little bits of butter. And if you have a rolling pin, you can use it, but you don't have to. We're going to just sort of pat them out. And I do keep them. I do okay, keep so it. that's going to be a thick. Well, I'm, I'm going to keep going just a little bit. Okay. Okay, but there we go. So just something about like that. Well, and you know, for this dessert, would, to me, just sings Mother's Day. Yeah. Because spring. it's, you know, it's spring, strawberries mm -hmm. are in season. Exactly. Okay, and then this is super important. Um, we want to use a cutter, um, but I'm going to just sort of tap this in the flour, and then we'll punch. And then, you know this, I know, but these folks at home may not. We're not going to twist it. No. Okay, we're not going to twist it. We're just going to punch. I sort of just punch and pop out. Pop it out. Ooh. And then we'll put them on this parchment line baking sheet. And then, so once again, and the reason you don't twist is because it can seal the edges. Mm -hmm. And if it seals the edges, it's not going to rise. And then I love this. If you want, I always say biscuits and shortcakes are kind of like people. So if you interesting. So listen. So this is the deal. So if you're nice to your neighbor yes. and you're touching your neighbor, <laughs> right? You're going to be soft around the edges, okay? Oh. And you're, it means you're nice, right? But if you're separate and you're not touching your neighbor, stay away. Stay away. You're going to be a little bit crispier around the edges. <gasps> Okay. So, so are we going to so, put them together? I think we should. It's Mother's Day. It's all about love. So let's we, do that. This is the show of love. Exactly. Exactly. I learned how to cook making biscuits um, with my grandmother and with my mother throughout my whole entire life. And now, which book recipe is this in? I believe that this is in Bon Appetit, y'all. Y'all, she's got so many books. How many, <laughs> how many books? I've got six books total. She can't even remember which book the recipe is. Well, I in. love to cook and I love to write recipes. Okay, so let's just see this where we are. We're gonna, if we want to reuse these, what we would do is like pat the scraps oh, together. Oh, no, this is an interesting yeah. tip. You, you make, the tendency might be to like roll it up in mm -hmm. a ball, but we don't want to do that because that'll make it more tough. So we want to sort of layer it just like this and then pat it out and then right. you can punch some more. Because the more you handle it, the tougher the dough gets. Exactly. And then to, right. to sort of finish these up, what we'll do oh, is wow. brush this with a little bit uh, of heavy cream. Oh, man. And then I've got some turbinado sugar, which is a big grain sugar that's super brown sugary. I mean, it's Oh, now will you let me do that? Yes, please do that. I love so the we sugar just part. Like, we just sprinkle the sugar on top, and, it, and when it <sighs> bakes, it's jewel-like. It's just beautiful. So when we come back, we're going to take my mama's Yay! china, which kind of goes with the theme today, and then um, Virginia is going to actually show you how to beautifully plate all of this. back everybody and Virginia it just looks beautiful. Does it smell good too? I mean I, it does mm -hmm. and you know any mom would be thrilled. Mama with, would be happy. With a meal like this. So you know Virginia so many times during presentation we have all kinds of props and mm -hmm. we have you know great looking unusual mm -hmm. vessels so today I brought in my mother's it china. So, so she could be represented in this whole thing but we would really love for you to walk us through mm -hmm. the actual plating because yep. we don't ever really do that. You know, and that's one of the questions that people ask me a lot when I teach cooking classes. So I think that that's great that you want to do that. So let's let's start with a salad, for example. So first of all, just like we talked about in this segment, it's not lettuce, right? right? So salads can be something other than lettuce. So that's one thing to consider. And it's not just because it's something different than lettuce. This is a little bit sturdier, right? So if you were to dress greens, you have a limited amount of time. But with something like this blanched vegetable, it buys you a little bit more time. So if you were having a lot of people right. and you wanted to exactly. plate this, exactly. I just love it. And so the other part is, so there's mint in the salad and there's lemon juice in the salad. 
And so I've garnished with lemon and mint. You oh, never too. would want to garnish with something that's actually not in the dish. That's, that's classic old school French. Right. So the other herbs were chives and tarragon and parsley. So you could garnish with that, but that, I just think that that's pretty. And then of course the yellow against that green, it really makes the, the, the colors pop. Well, I, can't wait for I you just to happen taste to have a fork in right, my there you go, little taste pocket. It. So. And of course I'm gonna put some of those asparagus tips sort of mm. facing upward, you know, so it's cause you eat with your eyes first. All those flavors. Right? Right. It's beautiful. Yeah. All so right. good. I'm so glad you like that. All right. So the grits now, of course, you know, shrimp and grits. The funny thing about this for me is that it's become, you know, it was once upon a time, you know, simple country cooking. That was like one of your first books. Well, it was one of my first books, but also before that, like my grandmother, you know, corn and corn was cheap and shrimp, shrimp was free because people could just go shrimping. So originally what has turned into this like sort of fancy dish was poor people food. Right. right? But back to the plating. So what I've done, you've got this beautiful plate with a sort of lace filigree. And so I didn't want to take away from that, but we do want to make the food the center, the bullseye of the plate. Right. Right. So I put a puddle of grits and then a spoonful of the sauce inside the grits and then I've put the shrimp to the middle and all the tails are facing upward so it really creates this bullseye. Okay, so then that just spills away all the people <laughs> that think you shouldn't have the tail on the shrimp. Well, it's this part is, of the presentation. It is part, this is, a, you know, is it easier to eat without the tail? Yes. Is it more beautiful to eat with a tail? Yes. So that's really that's really up to you, but you'll taste those beautiful Jimmy Red Geechee Boy Mill grits, just a God. little bit of Parmesan, a uh, little bit of and butter. And that Tony Saturies, yeah. that flavor, man, you can't Make, miss makes it. Makes it kick. Mm. And then I feel like that who you cannot go wrong in the spring with a shortcake, right? So we've mm -hmm. got this brown sugar, and you'll see how beautiful it is with the the sugar and the I turbinado. And I that sugar. That's what makes it sweeter, Vera. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So we've got the brown sugar and then the strawberries with just a little bit of the syrup created from adding the sugar. And it's it's simple. It can be some of it can be made ahead, it can be made in stages. And, and everyone can enjoy it, which is ultimately what you want to do with your mama on Mother's Day. Absolutely. Not stress. And for you, with mm. your grandmother being mm. so influential right. in right. your cookbooks right. and your recipes. Right. And my mama and the, too. And your mom. Yeah. And we cook together all the time still. That is so wonderful. Yeah. And you know, for me, I was so influenced. Mm -hmm. And that's one of our common threads. I think so. Virginia, I want to thank you so much. Thank you. And remember, no matter what you do, do it in good taste. These recipes are full of good taste. So please check them out and come back and join us again next week. Bon appetit, y'all.